Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we woke up thinking it was Wednesday and only learned about a half an hour ago that it is in fact Saturday. So hello everyone and welcome to the weekend. <laughs> Gonna have some fun sitting down to watch the Viper playing as the Tatars in teal take on heart playing as the Cumans in red. Now while the players heard their hurtables explore their immediate surroundings with Scout and with adorable Instagrammable sheep with their cute little scarves and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age as fast as possible. Let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. The Tatar is a civilization that does everything it can to push you towards mounted units. Their Cav Archers come with extra line of sight. They get Parthian Tactics and Thumbring for free. Some of their mounted units can be upgraded to get extra armor, and their first unique unit is the Keshik. This is a medium cavalry unit that actually generates gold every time it pokes, prods, and attacks an enemy unit which can be very, very useful in the late stages of the game when this gold becomes ever more scarce. Now, once your army is out on the battlefield, very important for the Tatars to take this. Why is the caster pointing at an empty piece of land waiting to be developed into a condominium? He is not. He's pointing at the high ground. Very important for the Tatars to take the high ground because instead of the usual extra 25% damage done from a higher elevation, Tatar units do 50% more damage. This, by the way, becomes even more important in the super later stages of the game when trebuchets start coming out because the Tatars can actually upgrade their trebs to have a massive plus two range, which together with Siege Engineers gives their trebs 19 range, which is just ridiculous and bonkers. Now, in order to help feed a big, hungry cavalry based army, Tatar Hurtables do contain 50% more food, and starting in Castle Age, every new town center spawns two adorable sheep underneath it which basically is 300 food for every new town center. We pivot immediately to the right side of the map. We've got Heart playing as the Cumans and lightning fast civilization with a few pretty random, pretty cool features. To start with, all Cuman mounted units become progressively faster as the game goes on all the way up to 15% faster in Imperial. And some of these mounted units can be upgraded to train in only half the time. I am looking at you, Scout Cav Line units, Step Lancers and Cav Archers. Now, if you want to put fast early game pressure on your opponent, you can actually build a siege workshop in Feudal Age, although you are limited to building only rams. If you instead prefer to pressure your opponent with ranged or mounted units instead of siege in Feudal, uh, Cumin, Archery Ranges, and Stables both only cost 100 wood, so you can build more of them earlier on. Now, if instead you say, forget the military, I'm an economic kind of person, let's build a big old booming economy, economy rather, the Cumans can actually build a second town center in Feudal Age, although remember this does take time, does take resources, and generally pulls villagers off the production line, which slows down your economy initially. Now to protect their big booming economy, the Cumans, uh, very much like the Goths, do not actually have stone walls, but unlike the Goths, their palisades come with 33% more uh, HP, and we'll take a look, uh, we'll see whether Cart decides to wall off his base with any palisades. For now, his sheep just kind of idling, waiting to be gathered. Now, once you've established your base, you've got your first castle up, you can begin training the unique unit of the Cumans, the Kipchak. This is a fast mounted archer unit that fires multiple arrows, although only the first arrow does full damage. These are the two civilizations. These are the two players. The Viper, not in his usual yellow, which may draw, raise some eyebrows, may uh, draw the ire of some fanatic fans, but this is the color he chose to play the Tatars in teal just to make it a tongue twister for any caster who wants to try both players off the back of 18 villagers. Let's take a look where their gold, where their stone, where their wood is gold and stone for the Viper. Nice and secure in the back wood lines, a bit of a triangle shape. So not the worst of bases pretty far away are the wood lines. And then he's got a bit of additional gold to the side position guarded by Tony, the tiger. And where is his additional stone? all the way off to the other side across this forest. Heart, for his part, primary gold, primary stone. I mean, the stone is in the backwards position. The gold is kind of in the middle. Uh, a little annoying to have this hill. He's going to want to take that hill probably earlier on, especially, again, against the Tatars, because any units up here are going to do 50% extra damage instead of the usual 25. And then the gold's on the other side. So is the stone. So he doesn't really have much in the rear of his base, except a few more forests and a relic. The Viper doesn't really have a rear base unless uh, he jumps off the cliff here and starts playing Starcraft instead of Age of Empires. 
Heart moving out on the map. Viper moving out on the map. Let's see what they've scattered. The Viper still doing the shrewdle around his base. Heart going straight for the Viper. Let's see if and when he discovers this mill, these houses, and notices where his opponent is. In three seconds, the line of sight you'll notice, boom, jumps up because now we're in feudal age. Their speed, their attack, and their line of sight all pop a little bit up. The Viper, is he actually uh, interested in scouting his opponent? I mean, he's way behind his opponent in terms of going up to feudal age. It just probably looks like he wants to do a uh, fast castle maneuver here with 23 villagers. Already has 400 food. Maybe he, oh, okay, maybe he's just looking for his sheep because he just now discovers where his sheep are. And now, no doubt, he's going to start moving out onto the map. So the Viper a little bit delayed in all respects, although we'll see. We'll see how long it takes these players to reach castle age. Blacksmith being part of a wall off in archery range, being part of a wall off. Our human already has two archers in the mix. He is trying to put on some very minor feudal age aggression, whereas the Viper is probably hoping that he rolled the dice and they landed up economy and not military for the cumin so that he can rush his butt up to castle age because in 30 seconds he's going to hit feudal and in a minute or so after that maybe two minutes he's going to have the golden food to go up to castle age and if our cumin is uh, starting to put on aggression wasting resources i mean a little bit of food is nothing but oh oh oh, oh, oh look at that moonwalking the moonwalking archer what is going on with age of empires does this happen in any other rts games does a zergling run backwards Oh my goodness. I mean, that's really the only RTS I can really reference being the only other one that I watch. And here we go. Viper is in feudal immediately archery range blacksmith. So he wants to go very quickly. He's a hundred foot away. And this pressure here from the cumin, it's not going to do much in our cumin, by the way, <laughs> look at his resources. Look at his resources. He's caught up in villager count. He's going heavy, heavy on the wood. On the lumber, pumping out more archers, wasting more gold. And the Viper is 30 food away from clicking up to Castle H, frantically defending. This should be a big, big warning sign. A big bell should be going off in Hart's head right now, saying, why the hell are you trying to keep me out so damn bad? And why the hell do you have two archery ranges and not a single unit produced out? Because bum, bada, bum, bada, bum, he is going up to Castle Age. Okay, so Hart's going to have a pretty big villager lead. We'll see how our Cumin can survive, I want to say. His base is not at all walled off. Again, no stone walls for the Cumins at all. An extra town center. Now, these are two resources to build this that you don't really need. I'm surprised he built it here and not uh, a little bit down further here. But these are not resources. Wooden stone, not exactly something you need for going up to Castle Age, which is uh, food and gold. Is this really the first time? No, the Viper has seen the, of his opponent's base. Yeah, I was going to say, this can't be the first time that the Viper has seen his opponent's base. But look at the Viper's base. He's got a scout to the north. He's got a spearman, an archer to the east. He's got two archers running around to the west. But does he carry a minute, less than a minute, away from hitting Castle Age? His opponent, man, nowhere close. <laughs> okay, now this might be... A 20 minute game. Skirmishers do come out. These are still feudal age units. Even if they got upgraded to crossbows, they still are going to have to be a little weary of any kind of skirmisher action. The Viper retreats from his opponent's base, says, You know what? I know what you're doing. You're putting on feudal age aggression. And Hart, 600 food away from going up to Castle himself. Where? Oh, where is he going to find? The strength to withstand cav archers from the Cuman, uh, from the Tatars. Okay, we've got a couple of kills already on the uh, battlefield. Now these archers, these archers. Let's see if they can get anything before they get gunned down by the uh, much, much more powerful, ca more powerful cav archers. Does the Viper, by the way, see this move out of units? No, he doesn't. So his scout is not positioned ideally to see this. And our Cumin, he's just doubling down. He's producing more and more army. Keeping an eye on his opponent. He does have the high ground, but... I mean, the high ground with archers against cav archers. Like I said, we might be seeing a 20-minute game. In which case, uh, you won't be seeing this game at all, because I'll probably not post it. Oh, Tiger gets activated. 
and immediately starts chasing. Okay, red is retreating all over the map. Our cumin, <laughs> he's doubling down. He is doubling down on feudal age. Does he really suspect that he can withstand Tatar cav archers? There's seven of them heading his way. I mean, this is big baller moves out of heart right now. This is like a uh, almost almost Mr. Yo style, and now he's starting to uh, bifurcate his base a little bit. Uh, this is not walled off. This is not walled off. Okay, okay. Viper strays a little bit too close to the town center. But now what the hell do you do? As the cumin here, you can't keep running away to your town center. You've got 45 food. Okay, you do have a whole bunch of skirmishers, though. Five of them. Important thing for red. Do not let teal take the high ground. Like right now, do not let them take the high ground. Park yourself up here. Defend, 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 but at home, oh my god, a trail of dead bodies, how many kills, eight kills, four of them economic, meaning villagers, I wonder why it says economic, yeah, I, I use the term civilian, I guess economy there refers to if he had a, like if he had a fishing ship here or something and that fishing ship died, I usually like the term civilian population, but I guess I should probably use the lingo, oh my god, even more, Economic kills. Uh -huh. I should probably use the lingo that everyone uses, but that's not in my nature, you know? Kind of stubborn. Kind of, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of my law. Let's see how much more. 12 kills for these cav archers. The villager lead of our cumin is significant, but it is going down, 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 down. He is 11 villagers ahead. He's lost nine. He would have been 20 villagers ahead had the Viper not come over with a few of these Cav Archers. And even though Red put on, I guess, a decent amount of pressure here. Look at the kill count. 27 to 6, as one would expect when one player is in Feudal Age and one is in Castle. And by the way, not only just one player in Feudal Age, one player is seriously doubling down on, a fe on Feudal Age. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like having a 9 against the Dealer 7 and doubling down. This is a very risky move here for Hart, who now gets a plus one, plus one on his ranged units. But now, evac gold, evac stone. Where the hell is he going to get resources? He's got one patch of gold over here. This one's unminable because it's out in the middle of nowhere and the Viper's bringing a villager. Not that Red knows that, but... You know what? Let's see. Let's see. Maybe I'm being a little bit too negative, a little bit too pessimistic because home court advantage does go to our cumin here. And the Tatars, I guess at this stage, the Viper is happy to just go Cav Archer. I mean, it doesn't really strike me as a composition that can overwhelm. He definitely has the kill lead. Don't get me wrong, but the Tatar cavalry line is not that bad. And by the way, both of these civs are two of the three civs in the game that get Step Lancers. So if the Viper was to add a few Step Lancers into here, I'm not too sure what the hell our Tatar could do in Feudal Age. He is going full on eco. Now he's 13 villagers ahead. <laughs> the Viper. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Why are you giving your opponent a chance to get back into here? There you go. There's some damage dealing units. A siege workshop. Where were you going? And what the hell is going on here? Three villagers. Actually, the tiger with the high ground could do some damage here. Tiger with the high ground. Oh, how much HP? Oh, <laughs> just barely survives. Tower might want to garrison some archer units inside of this. Those archer units are going to be completely useless against the cav archers. And our cumin is finally going up to Castle Age. How many years behind his opponent? How many kills? 26 fewer kills than his opponent. But, but Hart has held for now. Another tower going up for him. He's got two town centers. The Viper's in Castle, but the Viper's been pumping out military non-stop all the live long day, idling a bunch of villagers. Maybe not idling in the sense that they're not moving, but they are moving around the map. They are not gathering resources. He's down six villagers now, only by virtue of killing a whole bunch of human villagers who are now back on the farms. And what the hell? Viper. Oh, he dips his toe. It says, don't put your toe on the grass. And he literally, like all of us, when we were 18, 
dips a toe on the grass and takes a picture of it just so you can have it on on instagram more and more villager kills on the side of the cumin who is now sneaky sneaky building two very rear stables remember they only cost 100 wood so he can't afford it bloodlines as well so is he gonna go is he gonna counter this with ah uh, you know what I, I don't know let's see let's see i was gonna say step lancers but just because uh, man oh man do i love step lancers i'm surprised this cav archer remember the tatar cav archers come with extra line of sight so how can we so oh that's so sour literally literally this one cav archer it is right in the next tile over from his vision he would have spotted that but look at the viper forget the gold i'm taking your wood i want your wood right now and discovers another wood line this is finally is walled off oh he's going camels okay not something i uh was going to be on my top three of units to build but camels quick as lightning should be able to catch up to these cav archers finally kills the one that was here being annoying af but he's got a lot of cleanup to do. He's got five army count to 13. But is the, the Viper retreating? Is he retreating? What is going on in this game? What an absolute bonkers game. Manganel will fall. Two villagers a little late to the party. Attack round just nicks the tip of the camel toe. As 107 HP still remaining. And now these camels close on the cav archers. They are going to slaughter them. But they're focusing on the villagers. Okay, never mind. Never mind. With the tower's help. Actually, no, this is a, this is a, this is a freaking Tatar tower. Oh my god, I am uh didn't see that. There's your uh, cumin tower on the right side. Okay, but now the camel should be able to clean that up. We'll take a while camels uh eh, pretty pretty bad. Let's put it like that, at taking down structures. Not exactly a heavy hitter. Any attack bonuses for buildings at the moment? No, zero. They draw again the attention of another tiger who chases them, but he is not going to catch up to those. Look at the Viper. Look how confident he is. He's literally two tiles away. You don't need to be that close. You have six range. Why are you going so close? Unless you're just afraid of missing. But now you've been sandwiched. Now there's a town center. Now there's camels. And honestly, I think our Cuman should be pretty happy to just keep trading out at the moment. He's still ahead villager-wise. He still has two town centers to the one of his opponent. And by the way, the camels are now here. We'll keep an eye and see how much damage they can actually do. In the back of the Viper's base as he clears out another wood line with just one unit. This gold remains unmined. This stone remains unmined. Where, oh, where are reds? What do I see here? A bolt from a scorpion. Okay, got to repair that scorpion. I also saw a few villagers heading north. Probably the worst places you could put these villagers. Why not put them here, here, and here? Not too sure. Viper retreats. Man, did the... Uh, what do we think of the Viper's... Uh, strategy here with the siege workshop should he just gone cavalry i feel like that was a massive missed opportunity for him he was light years ahead of his opponent while his opponent was just in feudal age but on the flip side of that good for heart the way he held now he's gonna hold even more seven pierce armor against an attack of seven means one damage to this scorpion now a second scorpion comes out so this tower is done. The Viper's aggression is basically over. What did he just research just now? <laughs> He's been putting on so much aggression, spending so many resources on his military that he is getting double or got double bit axe at the 31 minute mark of the game. Not something we frequently see. Man, I would love to pick the Viper's brain about this game. What was he thinking? I mean, we know what he was thinking in terms of fast castle, but after that... Why double down on cav archers only? Could have definitely gone melee. Oh, God. Oh, goodness gracious. And yet again, the gold line finds itself evacuated under emergency orders. Farms evacuated. Oh, but this time, unlike in Feudal Age, there's two scorpions. And this is walled off now, but maybe not for long. Ooh, beautiful dodging by the villager. The Viper now investing in upgrades. He's at a plus two, plus one. He's going to be at a plus two, plus two. He's going to have 22 Cav Archers. And again, maybe on the high ground, he can take on these uh, Scorpions. Maybe spread your units out a little bit. Micro one or two of them. I mean, obviously, uh, easier said than done for me as the uh, person just watching this. Okay, he decides to do exactly that. Heart picks off the one weak Cav Archer. 
and now he gives up the high ground. This is not a fight the Viper wants to take. Now all of a sudden, your 50% increased attack is gone. The Camels also need to back the F off because there's only four of them with absolutely shitty, shitty armor. Another one bites the dust. However, two Scorpions still around. Villager repairing them, and this is just giving Hart time to get back into this game. He is now back to being 12 villagers ahead. Army count down significantly. But again, the Viper, what the hell are you going to do with 21 Cav Archers? Bust through a 333 HP Palisade, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this. So slow. So bad at taking down structures. That's why, you know, when I do my Civ intros, some people like, some people don't like. Whatever your position is. When I do my Civ intros and I do Hindustanis and I mention how their camels attack faster... I always have to point out that that fixes one of my biggest problems with camels, which is they just absolutely suck at taking down structures. So any kind of boost, any kind of benefit, whether it's a bonus uh, attack, whether it's a speed of attack, is a welcome sight when it has to do with camels. Because camels are more of a counter unit. It's like a skirmisher. They suck at everything except the thing they're designed to be good at killing. You know, whereas a knight, for example, an archer, an arbalest, whatever, a hand cannoneer, they're good at everything. Killing everything. <laughs> I have obviously uh, not units that have uh, special or high armor against them, but you, you guys know what I mean. Camels, not exactly great at anything other than killing units with cavalry armor. I guess other camels as well. Fishing ships, not exactly something I expect to see in this game. Two extra town centers, or uh, did my eyes deceive me? It looked like he wanted to plop down one here. What's he going to do with these villagers? Hart has enough resources for another town center, especially now that he canceled this one. So is he just gathering the gold first and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then he's going to... No one decides to plop it down here. Now he doesn't have the stone. Tell me you're going to build a mining camp. What the hell? What is going on in this game? I am very confused. I am very, very much confused. Is it... What day of the week is it? Camel's engaging here. We'll be able to do a good job. Okay, one. Scorpion does fall. The Viper finally using that high, higher ground elevation. Because instead of an 8, they'll attack on a 12. Which means they'll do 5 damage to these Scorpions instead of a usual 1. Which is a massive, massive boost. Camels here engaging from the low ground. Again, their shitty, shitty armor makes them very, very... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, paper mache -able? Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Boop, and you are dead. No more camel. No more camel rider. I don't mind this army composition. It's an interesting army composition. Not one that he can really move out with for heart. Not really one that you can really push out with. Just because, again, any anytime you're fighting against cav archers, you have to be so careful if you leave your base that they'll just double back with their speed and destroy you. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is the Viper missing husbandry? I think he's missing husbandry. Oh my goodness. I mean, I, again, I don't know what the hell is going on in this game. The Viper just keeps butting heads with units that are better than his. Look at the HP on these units for the Viper. They're it's absolutely dog shit. 200 HP out of 700? Why is he even here? Run the F away. You cannot get... Oh, okay. He's using his quantity to pick off a few camels. Or maybe damage a few camels here and there. But that's it. Get home. Okay. Annoying the wood line over here. Tickling away at the HP of the house. But no, he's back. He's doubling back. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. When you're fighting against an opponent who's going Cav Archer, you have to be so, so careful not to leave your base prematurely. You do not want a premature evacuation of your base with your military. Otherwise, they just, again, double back. Although, again, like I said, I think they're missing... I think they're missing husbandry. Camels will close. Camels should take this. Ooh, I kind of want to hit the... I want to see the HP. Okay, which one will he go after? Which one will he go after? Wow, look at the counter of the camel. Anything with that armor class that it counters just absolutely dies to it. A knight is out. Okay. Now, remember, the Cumans, their units right now are moving 10% faster in Imperial, if we're lucky enough to see Imperial. I mean, we're 42 minutes into the game. Not a single player has even a fifth of the resources to go up to Imperial. 
But if we're lucky enough to see an Imperial, they'll be going 15% faster, which might be problematic for our Tatar. Although, has been doing a good job keeping the pressure away from himself. Okay. Some camels die. Some cab archers die. Nothing new in this game. And here we go. Finally, somebody, somebody put down a castle. Defends the gold. Gets the high ground. Fantastic location. Although, I think this might be higher ground. And I think the Timurid Siegecraft trebuchets of the Tatars should be able to reach from there. Another scorpion did go down, but a bunch of cav archers. Let's see it. I mean, the villager lead is still in the teens. 15 this time. Now the cav archers retreat. They stop. Why did they stop? Okay. They were tired of living. And so they engaged full frontal with the camel. And somehow, not only has our cumin held, not only does he have a bigger military, I mean, just by one, but still a bigger military, he is also still ahead 15 villagers, same number of town centers, and he's already got his castle up. That being said, he's just now getting wheelbarrows. So both of these economies delayed and... Uh, not able to get up to their full potential as quickly as possible because both players won. <laughs> oh my god, imagine a camel, a few camels just show up here to the back. One player focusing heavy, heavy on economy, on a military, literally from, what, minute 13, 14 of the game? The other player just focusing on surviving the onslaught of the other player. Forging. Why is... Okay, no, never mind. Why, why? He's going... Uh, okay, he's adding in knights. Now, that's interesting. Why is he adding in knights? What did he see of his opponent that made him say, you know what? Let me add some knights into this. Camels are just absolutely perfect. I, I mean, I'm probably going to answer my own question and say he wants to destroy buildings because camels are not going to do jack against a house. Knights will. Knights will also, by the way, kill uh, villagers much, much quicker. But they're... Cav Archer enemies are probably laughing and smiling. Oh, he's going to intercept a whole bunch of them. They do have a bit more armor, but again, they do not come with that attack bonus, do knights? Nice. It looks like he got a few villager kills. So, our Cumin starting to do a little bit of counter damage. That being said, I mean, <laughs> just, what an absolutely bonkers game. I mean, I love this out of our cumin. He's building one of everything. He's got scorpions. He's getting monks. He's got camels. He's got knights. He's got 119 villagers. He's now 17 villagers ahead of his opponent as he leads the Viper on a merry chase, distracting no fewer than seven cav archers with one knight who is about to die as four more stream in. Will they get the villagers? Will they notice? No, they do not. Yes, they do. There are those two free sheep that spawn underneath every town center. The knights are not enough to teeth it because there are cav archers here. And now our cumin's going to get wiped off uh, the face of the earth here in the center of the map. A few teal structures still standing. A Keshik! Five Keshiks! So he wants to take on these knights. Again, every time they poke and prodded an opponent, it's not like the Viking unique upgrade where you actually have to kill a villager or you have to actually kill a monk or you have to kill a uh, trade unit. These guys just get generate gold whenever they poke and prod. They don't actually have to kill. And my bad, they were they went straight for that siege. Like me, when I see a uh, Domino's pepperoni feast, they just honed in like a laser target right onto it and just de devoured and look at that, our t our uh, cumin, having withstood so much aggression, having been behind so far, and by the way, still behind, 39 army count to 21, and the viper is housed, the viper is housed, okay, I see a few, oh, too little, too late there, a castle, <gasps> the villagers, after dying to those knights, did not return, they went uh, to go get, gather some sheep meat, it is our cumin heading up to imperial first, our Tatar's got the resource. Okay, now right as I say that, he clicks up as well. And the game kind of slows down, but... How do you slow down a game between the Tatars and the Cumans? 
two incredibly lightning fast civilizations. I mean, obviously the humans are a bit more speedy. Okay, finally looks like the Viper got husbandry. 1.54 tiles per second move the cab archers. And there he goes. He tries to, he pulls a Viper, but the Knights, they're not exactly feudal age units. They, can, they don't care about the town center. They just go right around that structure, but then they stop and then they die. So not too sure what the point of that was, except maybe perhaps to distract. Is Red trying to plan something here? I think Red is just trying, excuse me. I think Red is just trying to delay a little bit so that he can get up to Imperial unharassed. He needs a lot more wood, though, if he wants to hit that Imperial slash trebuchet timing that all the pro players love. He needs a lot more wood. Second castle has gone up and man, oh man, the cumin, the cumin is about to start pumping out units here. Look at this. No fewer than eight. How many in total, by the way, with the ones in the back? Apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. Eleven stables. Bonkers, bonkers level of production. He's going Cavaliers. Now take a look, by the way, at the movement speed of the Knights. Fastest moving Knights in the game, 1.56 compared to the usual, what is it, 1.49 of a Knight unit. The Tars do still move fast, but I believe, yeah, I think it's 1.49, the Knight, a regular Knight with husbandry, right? Camel tries to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against a bunch of Kashyyyks, but they outnumber him. They surround him, and they destroy him. Looks like there's raiding going on to the back here. A converted Kashyyyk as well. Does that generate gold for you as well? Yes, it does. Look at that. 605, 606, 607, 608. Every time he's poking and prodding, it goes up. What an absolute delightful thing to see. A Cuban Kashyyyk. There's a lot of alliteration today in this cast. I mean, look at the upgrades for the Viper. Teal. Tatar, Cuman, Keshek. He is getting guilds. He is getting conscription. He is getting armor. Attack for his range. Wow, but the Cavaliers in a minute and 58 seconds, Paladin. What is going on? How many games with Paladins have we seen lately? This is not a not such a common unit. But in come the Teal Keshek. They want to raid. What are you researching? Silk armor. So they're going to... Uh, some of these the Cuman units, these Cav Archers, are going to come with a lot of extra armor. But they're down. Look at their HP. Holy shit, get a monk in here. Get a monk or two. What are you doing here? <gasps> Looks like a traitor Keshik died. And a bunch of villagers are moving forward. Look at the Viper. Look at the Viper. I want your gold, he says. But a minute away from Paladins. And what the hell is the Viper going to do against Paladins with units that are down 800 HP? I mean, they look at their armor now. Seven Pierce armor. Six melee. But six melee is not great against the Paladin's attack. The only good thing going for our uh, Tatar is that our Cuman's attack upgrades are absolutely dog shit. He's sitting on forging right now. He's only at a plus one. He'll hit plus two by the time Paladin is done. But then Blast Furnace does take a minute 40 seconds. Oh, 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 oh. Not an engage our Cuman really wants to take at the moment. Why take it? And never mind. There they are. Paladin's the Viper sees it. The Viper immediately retreats. Nothing he can do against the unit that attacks on a 16 and moves at a, by the way, faster than these Cav Archers. Absolutely bonkers turn of events. And now we've got Keshek's rating. Let's take a look at the Teal's gold. Never mind, forget that. It's uh, way too confusing. Paladins will save the day. A bunch of idle villagers just standing by, but what? No, don't take this fight. They're on the high ground. 11 attack becomes what? 16, 17? And you're on the low ground? Oh no. Oh no. What a disaster for our Cuman. How many Paladins did he lose? He still got 30 though. He still got 30. I don't know if... Uh... What? Oh no. Wow. Why did our Cuman GG? What am I missing here? Oh, okay, he was raided. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what am I missing? I'm missing the fact that he lost 88 villagers. Yikes. So his economy was just raided. And what did he see that made him GG, I wonder? What well, loses one paladin to a conversion. That's nice for the Viper. Lost a whole bunch of paladins. So he's got 30 left. Four of them are here. So 26. A bunch of them are uh, riding straight into this castle on the higher ground. 
The Kashuks are not really a threat to the Paladin, not with, uh... Actually, maybe they're elite. I didn't realize they were elite. Yeah, there might be a bit of a threat to the Paladin. Let's take a look, compare the stats just super quickly. Extra HP for the Paladin, 16 attack for a 12, 5 melee against 4 melee. Yeah, so it's a, a little bit. Uh, the Paladin, uh, full health versus full health, what, the Paladin will survive with uh, 20, 30 HP. But he is raiding over here. Our Tatar takes it, but our Cumin, I guess, just couldn't handle being raided. He's down to 130, 13. How many of those were idle before he GG'd? Okay, 24 of them were idle. So he's actually down to 89 productive villagers to the 129 of the Viper. The Viper's economy, active economy, actually 50% bigger than his opponents. And our Tatar, man, I would have loved to see this game go on a little bit longer. But wow, let me know in the comments why you think Hart GG'd. 33 army count to 55. I mean, we know the stats. We can see the stats, right? We can see that the Viper has 900 food, 200 gold. We can see that our Cumin is basically... Uh, actually, no, let me move all the way fast forward. Yeah, he's basically gold starved. He's got no gold left. No gold, barely any food. He doesn't have enough stone for a castle, which means he'll either have to uh, be happy to repair or he's going to have to buy stone. But let me know in the comments below, why did our Cumin GG? This was an absolute terrible fight. But was it enough to force Hart into a tap-out situation? I mean, look at the map. There's just action everywhere. Paladin's chasing a former friend who defected to the other side. Paladin's attacking villagers. Paladin's attacking villagers, attacking Keshek's attacking paladins. Paladins defending villagers being attacked by Keshek's. Keshek's raiding villagers as paladins head their way. I'm going to keep saying paladin, paladin, paladin every five seconds. Trebs are out, it looks like, for both players. No Timurid Siegecraft just yet. Is it possible that Hart is just resource starved? I mean, he's going to lose control of this gold. And really, what does he have without that gold? I'm taking a very quick look at the map. He's got stone. So he's not even going to have to. I retract my former statement. He's not even going to have to buy stone. He can plop down another castle. Not that a, another castle is really going to do much. He's not really going to go uh, pivot now to Kipchaks with a plus one, plus one attack. But I, I think it's, it must be the combination of raiding and losing control of this last gold pile. I don't see on the minimap any other gold that he can take or it can be controlled by him. And just taking this, he must not have been looking. Otherwise, why would he take a fight on the low ground against fully upgraded Tatar heavy cav archers supported by a castle and outnumbering him with elite Keshek support? Just not a fight I think he should have taken. Let's take a look at the stats. Cav archers for the majority of the game. Heavy is towards the end. Look at that. PKPM from the Viper. Middle of the game. 79 Paladins. Again, for the majority of the game, were Knights slash Cavaliers. Right at the beginning of the game. So pulling a Mr. Yo and clicking furiously right at the start. How do we think the economies are going to be? Probably very similar, right? I don't see it being too different. Yeah, look at that. Four relics for the Viper. One relic. Uh, maybe that played a role in it. I'm not too sure. You're not exactly playing Lithuanians, Burgundians, Aztecs. You're just playing a basic Civ when it comes to relics. All the resources except for stone going to our cumin. And honestly, with uh, the stone difference might be in that one patch that he's still mining, but a little bit more food, uh, wood, a lot more food, a little bit more gold, and a little bit less stone. So less than 10% difference in economy size. Conversions also probably not really playing a role. Yeah, two conversions, two conversions. I really suspect it's this 88 number here that forced our cumin into tap out because 88 villager kills is pretty bonkers. 229 total kills. So I don't know who got more military. It does look like the Viper got more military and civilian kills. Our cumin managing to kill a total of 136, of which 27 were villagers slash economy slash civilian. And I think just the combination of this bad fight, he didn't dislodge the gold. There's still 600 gold here, by the way. How much stone is left? Yeah, 1250 stone. So he's he's going to be able to take stone as well if the game continues. But what the hell are you going to do with stone? Maybe sell it? And that's basically it. I think he realizes he just cannot produce anything at the moment unless he wants to go. I don't even know if he got the light cavalry upgrade. Did he get the light cav upgrade? It's pretty pretty bonkers. He definitely doesn't have the resources to go up to uh, Hassar. That's it. So I, I suspect he just realizes, even though he's built a nice, impressive base, even though he held on 
Holy moly, did he hold on? He must have looked at the scores and said, hey, the Viper's 30% higher score than me. What the actual F is going on here? I obviously can't come back from this, so even though we, with our God's Eye caster view, know that he may have been able to. And there's even more stone over here. Look at that. And with that amazing hold, what an, uh, just what a strange, bizarre, super fun game this was. And I'm glad we got to see Paladins. I'm glad we got to see fully upgraded heavy cav archers for our uh, Tatar, even with Silk Armor, even six melee, seven Pierce Armor is bonkers on a cav archer. Man, does that insulate them from any kind of a counter attack. But unfortunately for our Cumin, he held as long as he could, blew all his resources, has no gold left in the bank. 10 villagers mining gold. So there's obviously, oh, okay, so it's this gold patch right here is the last one. And then once this is mined out, I think he realizes he's, he, there's nothing left for him. Even though they are carrying 78 gold. So he can't, oh, okay, he can, he can build, he can't train two paladins. <laughs> and he decides to tap out, realizing that he can no longer train any more units, even though, again, we saw what a fantastic hold, fantastic base, fantastic play out of both players. And ultimately, though, it's the Viper with that early game push, the doubling down. Man, do these units scale. Man, do they snowball out of control. 48 heavy cav archers. Take a look at the minimap with plenty of high ground for them to add 50% to their attack. And with those cav archers, the Viper takes the W, but really, truly fun game. GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.